for the elastic one, we're going to have the initial momentum equals the final momentum. So 6 plus 4 is 10 equals 3 times V1 plus 4 times uh, V2. So now the elastic, they're no longer stuck. So each one individually has a separate velocity. The 3, V1, 4, V2. And then the kinetic energy is conserved. So what was the initial kinetic energy? Well, we already did the initial kinetic energy is 8 joules. And then we set that equal to the final kinetic energy. Uh, 8 equals half times 3 times v1 squared plus half times 4 times v2 squared. Over here, we create a situation where we need to do some substitution. Two equations, two unknowns. And so over here, we're going to set, uh, set v1 equals 2. And then we can substitute it into that v1. Multiply everything by 2 here. You substitute, you get rid of the V1, and then you bring it over here. You go 16 equals, uh, you get rid of one of the threes, uh, 10 minus 4 V2 squared divided by 3. And then multiply everything by 3. You're going to get 48 equals, then expand this out, 100 minus 80 v2 plus 16 v2 squared plus 12 v2 squared then add these two you get 0 equals 28 v2 squared minus 80 v2 plus 52 You could simplify it by dividing by 4. Okay. And then you solve this quadratic equation, right, um, for V2. Now, I know for these kinds of problems that one of the answers for V2 is going to be like, I know that this is already going to be factorable. And I know how to factor it because one of the answers of V2 is going to come out what? V2 is the final velocity that the 4 kilogram block has, right? One of the answers of V2 is going to equal 1 meter per second. Which is equal to its original uh, initial velocity, right? So in order to make this factorable, I can have 7v2 here, and I can have a plus 13, right? So now it's going to be 7v2, 13 minus 7 is, uh, oh, no, I need negative 13. Uh, negative 13 minus 7 is negative 20, and then negative 1, uh, that's positive 13, right? So uh, this one gives me that solution, and then this one gives me this solution. 13 sevenths, which is uh, 1.67 is uh, 84. That's the real one, right? Now, how did I know that one of the answers for V2 is going to equal to its original uh, um, velocity? Well, that's because I'm the teacher, right? <laughs> okay? I just happen to know that. Well, that's what happens whenever you solve these elastic collision problems. For the elastic collision problems, you always get two answers, one of which is equal to the, its original uh, velocity. The reason why you do that is because the, prob the equation is telling you this. If two objects come and they don't even collide, Let's say they happen to be like two cars on different lanes. 
this car is coming, this car is coming, and they happen to be on different lanes and they just pass each other. The collision doesn't even happen. Okay? If the collision doesn't even happen, do you consider momentum and kinetic energy? Yeah. If the collision doesn't happen, they're on different lanes, then you still conserve their momentum, you still conserve their kinetic energy, and so the final velocity of both of them is equal to their initial velocity. So when we set the requirements on the problem, initial momentum is final, kinetic, initial, kinetic, final, we solve it. Well, one of the answers is if the collision never happens. Right? This one means collision never happened. So th that's why we don't even take that answer. This is the answer we want. Okay? Then we put this one into V1, and we get the final velocity of the uh, first object. What's that going to be there? I don't think it's negative yet. But it's not bouncing back. Hmm? 0.88. You probably are going to notice this. In the elastic case, this one is going to slow down more and this one is going to speed up more than in the inelastic case. Uh, this one is, will be affected more. It's going to come, slow down, and then it's going to give this one a little real kick, you know? So um, now let's answer the question, what is the mutual force of contact? And with that one, we end this problem, OK? So what is the impulse? Let's just choose the impulse on the 4 kilogram is equal to a uh, change in momentum of the 4 kilogram. So 4 times V final of the 4 kilogram, which is the 1.84, minus the 4 times its initial velocity, which is 1. That's the impulse that is imparted on the 4 kilogram block by the 3 kilogram block. Is that it? 3.36? Now set that equal to the average force on the 4 kilogram times the time of the, their collision. And you should find that the average force of their collision is more now. The time of their collision is a half a second. Okay, what was the average force of contact in the inelastic uh, case? What was it? 3.42. So inelastic So about half, not exactly half See, the double that would have been 6.84. This is 6.72. So there's not a, a rule that it has to be half. But in this case, it happened to be about half. The average force of contact, if they collide inelastically, is ha almost half as much as the elastic case. So this now shows you why you can hurt something more with an elastic collision. Okay, that's good.